All right, so today's the day we're gonna put the blowers back on. Got the gaskets on with some gasket sealer, just because we're gonna be moving these blowers around a little bit, so that will tack them in, um, kind of make it stay a little bit easier so we're not wrestling with that as well. And then we're gonna put the back blower in and then the front blower almost at the same time. So, got everything cleaned up inside. Looks halfway decent. It's not 100%, but it's a million times better than what it was. And yeah, we're gonna put the back one on and we'll do a quick video of that. All right, so we got one blower quasi in place, got the bushing back in. I just put this chain on right here, which matches up from the forward to the after, aft to the forward. And so the, now the next one that we put in, the cogs in the back need to line up with that. And we gotta make sure that we don't move our gasket around. And so this is gonna be a little, little science here to try and get that. And then this bushing needs to go back on there. And uh, that should all be in place. So we'll see. And then we've got four studs, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four studs that go back down and hopefully mesh everything back together again so we'll see how it works all right we're going to start moving this one into place well cool i got them both in this was actually pretty easy to line up and to make it easier i had a couple of fuel lines here and here in the front governor box uh was hitting so i took those out of the way so i can move the whole unit forward so little trick I guess um, if you can get to your fuel lines under your fuel lines and you've got like three or four more inches to kind of put it in move it forward and then move it back and set it in the gears and I think so far I've got all four of mine threaded in so that means that um, and I pre-tacked the the gaskets because I knew that they were gonna be that we we're gonna be shifting them around so I used just what do you call this stuff gasket sealant from Permatex and uh, just buttered up the uh, top of the, the block and set it in let it sit for about 10 minutes to, to really tack up so we could kind of move these things around without them going nuts and going all over the place and having them then pull it back out again so hopefully if Matt gets his in I've already got mine in so this sounds like a Matt problem if he can't get his in that's that's his box right there so but I think we're good, and then we're gonna screw all these down, and um, we gotta get the the rack rods back in here and here, which goes to the to the rack assembly arm, and that's what moves all of the injectors and stuff like that. Um, and then we can, I got new gaskets coming for here. We can put the shutoff back down and on, and kind of start putting this thing back together again. And um, I got my other box of uh, my air box back I just got to put the ends on that and then I can drop those back in and if you remember here I had a hard 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 time getting this off and so I got new studs to come up because when I then finally took them off they were a several of them were bent and we one was broken um, in the other air box so um, so I got new ones coming for that so hopefully we're coming along I'm gonna put the back end back together again we'll see what happens Good stopping point. I mean, I, I guess. Do you, do, you, do you want this on? Yeah, we're going to put it on. So, but we're ready to torque. So, these are 65, and the sides are 35 pounds. So, that was a really pain in the big butt to get on. I had to re loosen everything. I got this one and that one on. They should all drop in, but they didn't. So, I finally got that one in. They're snugged, so I'm going to go through and torque them. I'll do two rounds of torquing, so I'm not killing it, but uh, 65 on the halves and the three eighths are 35 on the sides. So we're gonna go do that, and then the blowers will be back in, and then we're gonna put the back end back on. I got the fuel lines already done and ready to go. The shutdown is back on. I'm waiting for my new gasket here, which is a new gasket, but we've already broke this. And we'll put the uh, bypass pipe back on have the uh, thermostat sitting on the floor there, and we're making progress. So I think we can put the boxes on tomorrow, the coolers. All right. So 
Matt, we gotta remember how to do this. I got one in. You did. So these are the rods that go through here that connect to the to the rack which connects to all of the injectors. And I did get one in. This one went in easy, but it's literally like a game of Tetris to get this in. As you can see, it's all bent and you gotta get it through that little hole, comes through there. And we finagled with it for like, what, 15, 20 minutes last time. And then finally, the stars aligned and it went right through. So we're gonna see if we can't get this thing back in. And then I can button up all the governor crap up here. And it's getting close to coffee time. So hopefully we can get this done quick. Okay, well, you can hear that it's pouring outside, so there's not much we can do. I'll try later on so I can wrap up a few videos of showing you the paint that uh, I did, the first, first round of paint. So I'm gonna put the injectors back in and get them cleaned. You can see, maybe if this focuses, that that tip is a lot cleaner than it was. And you can almost see, again, terrible. But you can almost see the uh, the little little holes. I tried to find an orifice cleaner um, this morning. They're not that bad, so I've just cleaned them up with a, a Scotch Brite pad and some some cleaner, some carbon cleaner. Um, so I'm going to drop this in and just hopefully do the other side. We're going to drop the coolers on. Got one sitting on the ground ready to go, and the other one I just put together yesterday afternoon. So coolers and tops back on finish cleaning up the turbos and get that back together again and we're pretty much good to go minus the uh the other side for the injectors and then we can start priming this thing and uh, i got a new gasket too coming there i still need to get that bolt out of there that broke um i got new gaskets for the other side for the for the uh um antifreeze box as well because i took that off so um yeah getting close so i'm gonna start getting these things uh put back in and um Hopefully we'll get it fired up. You know, when you're putting these things back, these go to 90 pounds. These only go to 15. And you're supposed to inspect, kind of neat, these are all flares. But you inspect the, the bottoms here and see how they look. If they're all mashed up and banged up and not feral like that, then somebody's over-tightened them. And they're probably going to leak, so you have to get new ones. I've inspected these. These look pretty good. So not over tightened, not squished. And um, when you put them back, it's always easier to put this one in first because you notice if you put that one there, you're not gonna be able to get to that one. So put this one in first so you can get that a good, good wrench on there and tighten that up and then put that one on and you got plenty of room to tighten that one up. So I'm sure you'd figure it out, but that's, that's the way to do it. All right, cool. So I got the coolers on um, new gaskets put a little bit of sealant on them I got a new gasket on top here um, this one I put all six studs in and then slid it down this one here because I've got a hose here and a hose there and I'm working by myself I put the gasket on and let it tack up and then I slid this in there met it up with the um, the hose and then found where the studs go and then screwed them down just so I wasn't trying to put both of these things down over the studs at the same time. So working by yourself, that's a little bit easier to do. Um, and I got just one more stud I got to put in and we should be good to go. I'm going to throw some more gaskets on top and I've got the two top plates, which are the intakes uh, and also the shutdowns um, for these uh, up in the truck. I'm going to go grab them right now and um we'll get those on and we're pretty close to getting wrapped up all right so matt just showed up so i've got the gaskets on here and here he's go gone and grabbed the housings so this housing goes there and then the other one's kicking around here somewhere which will go there and then that will connect that's our shut down that goes up to the pilot house and to the bridge and that will shut down ugh, these flappers right here and then that prevents air from getting into the system which should then shut down the engine um, so if you have a runaway diesel especially like on a Detroit this is what's happening is that this is 
closing and shutting and preventing air from getting into um, the engine. So we've got a different gasket that will go on top that will accommodate this, that will accommodate that. And so when it does fall, it collapses right on there and will prevent a, and create a pretty good seal. So Matt's cleaning up the metal plates right now that go in between here and there and those two gaskets and we'll clean up the rest of it and get them put on and then we're pretty close um i got a new gasket this morning for um the thermostats so i can clean that up put that back on put all of the water side back together again fill up the radiator with antifreeze get that out of my mid-state room cabin um, where it's been stored um and then the fresh water side will be done Put my shutdown back on, which I should have done before I did that, but I can work around that. It's not that difficult. I'll do it right now while Matt's outside. That's the shutdown right there, that thing. So that goes right here, tied to our governor, which will then shut it closed and kill the kill the fuel to the, to the engine. Fuel cooler from there to there. That's sitting outside in the hallway. Um, we'll get that back on and then um, the tensioner spring here. So, and then just the rest of the turbo stuff. So we're close, we're, we're close. And I still gotta do the cleaning of the injectors on the other side, but all in all, this took me maybe an hour tops to, to do this. So that's not really all that bad. So, oh, and then I gotta paint the rest of this stuff. That's it, we're getting close, excited. Okay, so it is well, almost coffee time. So I'm about to get out of here, but we got everything. Back in order, Matt's putting the final touches on the turbo connections. We've got um, all of our throttle bodies back together again. This I've got just hanging out loose because I still have the valve cover off and I may need to take that off to put the valve cover back on easily. Fuel cooler, blowers, coolers, everything is back on. Um, we just got to throw some antifreeze in it and put the air steps back on, which again, I'm waiting to do because it's just easier to have the valve covers off. And then um, just this right here, I'm waiting to put back on because this is in conjunction with this, that little bolt right there. And then I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. Over on this side, I've got everything sourced and ready to go. We just got to put this connection around to here. I got the gasket, two gaskets for here I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna pull this out. It seemed as though that I was having a leak down here, which is then running down on, on a here. So I may source to see how hard it is to pull it, but if you can see, this is right in the way, which is the thermostat and thermostat housing, which I just put back in. So it may be the outside, it kind of looked like it was the outside gasket that was leaking, because inside of this is the antifreeze. So if it was antifreeze, you'd kind of tell and we weren't losing any freeze. So I'm thinking I'm good on the inside. So we may just clean all this up and put a gasket, put it all back together again. And uh, the only thing we'll have left is just the injectors over on this side and we're ready for test fire. So good end of a Friday, right Matt? Yes. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff done today. Um, oh, and that solenoid is probably in to put on that head. And then that's probably it for today. So. I'm heading out for coffee. All right, I'm excited. Andrew. Yes, sir. <laughs> Chris. All right, these guys are from WW Williams. So we got everything put together yesterday afternoon. Chris came down this morning to help me. Basically, we did uh, adjusted all the injectors. Adjust the valves. The adjust valve. the injector height and reset the rack. Yep. Did you use uh, your, your gauge to in do the injector height? Yeah, I had that on the gauge. It's no longer working, so I had to do it the old-fashioned way. Which I dig more. I dig With more. The stick gauge. Yep, there you go. You got it. So there's a tiny little pin inside the top of the um, injector that I was showing you guys yesterday that I pulled out. And then this right here, right there, that's what sets the top of the injector. So you just roll it across there, and if that height meets that height, you're good to go. I mean, you don't have to worry about a little dial. Nope. You know how you don't. The thing is, you don't know how far out you are, but you know you're out, and then you just can set it, and you, yeah. then you're done. You're good to go. So, 
Everything's marked. You can see all those orange marks. That means Chris has touched every single one of those. I bartered over for him. So basically I did all the hard work. He just sat there and just did some feeler gauges. And were we that far out? Thumbs. Yeah, totally your thumb. Uh, we were only about two thousandths, three thousandths out on each valve. Yep. Some, some were good, some I didn't even adjust. But. And then what about the injectors themselves? Um, some of them are the same thing. Some of them are, with this, you, you know, I can't tell exactly what it is. Right. It's more of a feel. Yep. But some of them I didn't adjust, some of them I did. So cool. Not all in all, not too bad. Cool. And so the biggest problem today was, I'll pull it out. Andrew decided to come down and help us. And uh, the second he came down here, everything fell apart. Literally. Literally. So this is a ferrule fitting, and it's, like, non-existent in the world. And this is the the line that goes up to our fuel pump. So this is the fuel filter housing, and this goes right up to the fuel pump, which I've shown you guys before is way back down in there, which then flows through the through the whole system, which is one nice thing about a Detroit. You can run it out of fuel and start them pretty easy because you can just prime them and and make them make them go so so that somehow right there cracked because andrew was here and so i ripped it off of the other engine and we got one on order that's coming here friday right yep for five dollars it is a five dollar fitting and fifty dollars worth of freight <laughs> <laughs> actually it's 15 isn't it it's a 15 dollar fitting okay. and we cheaped out on the freight so yep. we're waiting on we're it. waiting on it because we stole it from the other engine that's not the one we're working on now so so basically, we're all set. We're going to start turning this thing over and see if we can't uh, make her go bang and boom. That's correct. Right? All right, let's see what happens. Well, that's it. Job's done, I think. Thanks uh, for watching. This has been a pretty long journey. Took us, uh, obviously, a lot longer than expected, but hopefully you guys got something out of it. Um, motor seems to be running well. We're going to start the next side. We've got guests on board and uh, a lot more to do. So stay tuned. Make sure you guys uh, like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.